Hello again, my amazing first grade artists. Welcome to our second week of art. This week, we're gonna be starting our first art class project together. So you can go ahead and put your sketchbook away. And today, we're gonna to be starting to make something that looks like this. Hmm. Well, I see some curly pipe cleaners and lots of different colors. And I kind of feel like if I turn it a certain way, or maybe the other way, hmm, I kind of start to see some flutters in that artwork as well. I'm going to tell you more about it in just a moment here, friends. But first, before we start our art project, let's find out what art materials we're going to need to get together so that way we can make our artwork together. Let's take a look. All right, first grade friends, here are the art supplies that we are going to need to make this art project today. First of all, your yellow art portfolio that has all of your papers in that you'll need. You're going to also need a pencil either with an eraser or you can have a separate eraser. And then you're also going to need either a Sharpie or a black marker. Please have either or of those, or you can have both out if you'd like as well. Please go get these art materials together, and then we're going to learn about our learning target and what we need to do to make our art today. All right, artists, as always, before we begin our art project, we're going to read our learning targets together. Here are our targets. Again, I'm going to go ahead and read them first, and you can repeat after me. I can fold paper in half. So our first thing that we're going to do in a moment here, once we have our paper out, we're going to do some folding. Don't do it yet though, okay? I want to also read our second target. And there's a big word that we're going to learn about that's really important for our art project and for your template here on Seesaw. So listen carefully to what I'm about to say. Here we go. I can use symmetry in my artwork. So what is symmetry? The word symmetry means that something is the same on both sides. For example, if you were to look at my face right now and we were to draw a line right down the middle of it, oh, well, if I get here, I can see that I have an eye on each side and both of them are blue. I go a little farther and I might stop here and notice, oh, well, I have an ear on each side and they're both the same size. I can keep going down. I could go down my whole body even and oh, on each side, I have arms and two hands. Now in my case, mine aren't exactly the same because I have tattoos that make them different or I even wear things like rings and watches sometimes that make them look different. But my body personally has symmetry because it has the same thing on both sides of my body. Another example of symmetry, and my favorite example, happens to be this bug. What is this bug? I hope my friends guess it's a butterfly. I drew it myself. And you see, I've added what's called a line of symmetry down the middle of the butterfly. So if you look on each side of the butterfly, you'll find things that are the same. There's both a smiling circle on each side, as well as a heart on each side, and there's a curly antenna on each side. So a butterfly is a great example of an insect that has symmetry. Again, that's important for when you answer your template here in Seesaw later. It's gonna ask you about symmetry and have you circle some pictures. But for now though, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our art project. And what this art project is called is Symmetry Name Bugs. We're gonna be using our own name. And if you might've noticed, my name is in mine. You see it has M-S-G-R-E-A-T-H-E-A-D, Miss Greathead. So we're going to be using our own name and symmetry to help make our art projects starting this week. All right, friends, if you're ready, let's get started today. Here is my art portfolio. I'm going to go ahead and open it up now. I don't need my sketchbook, so I'll just go ahead and put that to one side. You're going to notice that you'll have a pipe cleaner right here. We're not going to need that today. We're going to need that next art class when we finish our project. That's going to be the antenna for our bug. So please leave it safely inside of your folder and only grab out this first white sheet of paper. You should see a leaf after it. Leave the leaf in your folder, please. Only take out this white sheet right now. So I'll go ahead and close my folder up, make sure my paper clip is with it, and I can set my art portfolio to the side. All right, here's my piece of paper. And if I remember correctly, our first learning target said that I'm gonna fold my paper in half. But this is the important part. I don't want to fold it like a book. You see how it's a nice wide rectangle? I actually want to fold my paper 
the skinny way. So I'm going to take one long side of my paper and I'm going to fold it over to the other long side of my paper. I'm going to match those up the best that I can, hold it down with one hand, and use my other hand to push up and down on the fold. I should now have a nice long, long skinny rectangle. All right, one more important step. Now that I have this nice long skinny rectangle, you see how it can still kind of open up like a book? Well, we're gonna pretend right now that this piece of paper is a paper monster. Oh, nom 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 nom. And he is gonna try to eat you. So should I have my paper monster om nom nomming at me? No, we wanna keep Mr. Monster away from us. So watch, I'm gonna turn him around and he's gonna open now away from me. See how he om nom noms away? That is really, really important, my friends, to make our art project work today. So I should have that fold facing me, and I should have the opening of my monster mouth facing away from me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab out my pencil because I need to write my name on this piece of paper, but there's a very specific way I want you to write it, my friends. First of all, should I write my letters really, really teeny tiny so that way they're hard to color in? Probably not, right? I want to make my letters nice and big, and I'm going to use my first name this time just to show you it a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with a nice large capital A, and it's going to almost touch the top and come back down, and then I'm going to add my line in the middle. That's a nice big letter, but there's one more thing that's missing. You see the bottom parts of my A's? I need to make them touch all the way to that fold line. Again, the fold should be facing me, so they should drop all the way to that fold line. There's my first letter. Now I can use all capital letters in my name or I could use lowercase letters. If you have a really, really long name, my friends, try to use a nickname to help it fit on your paper. I think today I'm gonna use some nice capital letters. So I need a nice big letter M that starts all the way at the very bottom of my paper and comes on up and then touches back down on that fold again. It falls on that fold. All right, I have one more letter. The letter Y, A-M-Y, is how I spell my first name. So I'll go ahead and I'll draw it like this. Uh-oh. It's way too small and my letter doesn't touch the bottom. Oh, I forgot for a moment. So I'll go in with my eraser and I'll erase it back out and I'm going to fix it. This time, I'm going to make sure that I draw it nice and large and that it touches and falls all the way to that fold. So I'm going to start with my first part of my Y that I make, kind of like a nice big letter V, and then I'm going to draw that nice straight line all the way down to the fold. Awesome. I have three nice big letters for my name, A, M, and Y for Amy. The last thing I'm going to do now, my friends, with these letters, I'm going to go ahead and grab out either my Sharpie or my black marker, and I'm going to trace those letters exactly how I drew them. This is a very, very important step, my friends. This is going to help make our symmetry easier for our names. So I'm tracing right on top of those pencil lines that I just drew, just to make them darker. Whoops, I got off of my pencil line a little bit. Not a big problem, it's a small problem. I'm gonna just try my best to stay on my pencil lines. All right, I have my letters drawn and traced out. Now it's much easier for you friends to see how I drew them. Again, make sure they're large and they touch that folded bottom part of the paper that is pointed at you because your monster is om nom noming away. If you need to at this point, please pause the video and catch up to where I am because this next step is gonna be a little bit different than what we're used to. So please, please make sure that you are caught up with me before you continue. All right, artists, if you've noticed, I've moved in my classroom. I am now standing right in front of one of my nice, bright, sunshiny windows because we're gonna need a window for our next step. So I have my name, which I trace with my black marker, and I also have a pencil ready in my hand. What we need to do now is take our name from this side of the paper and somehow make it appear on this side of my paper. Hmm, well, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna take my name and I'm gonna start holding it against the window. And if you notice, as I push my name onto the window, you can start to see my letters through the paper. That is a backlighting trick that we are gonna use to make our name now on the other side. 
but you're going to notice that your name is backwards. That's okay. Don't worry about the fact that the letters are backwards. Just take your pencil and start tracing those letters just the way that they are onto now the back side of your monster's mouth. And I'm using my pencil nice and carefully to trace right on top of those letters. Again, my name is ending up backwards, but that is okay because Miss Grade had said that's part of our project. We need to have this part backwards, that's okay. And I'm taking my time using both hands to hold my paper and draw. All right, I have traced all of my letters on my paper. I'm gonna show you now. Here's the back side with my pencil lines and here's the front side with my black marker. This is how it should look. I have all of my letters on there and it's okay that it's backwards. We're gonna now go back to the table and I'm gonna show you our last two steps that we need to finish up the first part of our art project today. Here I am back at my table. I have my name drawn in pencil now on the back side. Again, on the front side, I have it in marker. So, just like I did on the front side, I'm gonna go ahead and one last time, I'm gonna trace my letters using either my Sharpie or black marker, whichever one you have, my friends. And again, it is okay that your name is backwards. If you look right now, mine spells Y-M-A, which is the opposite. But that is all right, my friends, because this is all part of symmetry sometimes. Sometimes things might look backwards if they're the same on both sides. Speaking about both sides, I had you draw your name on the front side of your paper and now on the back side of your paper. So our last step for today, my friends, is simply to unfold your paper and take a look at what happened with your name. Now my fold line is that line of symmetry and on both sides of that fold, I have the exact same letters drawn the exact same way. This is gonna become the body of our bug starting next art class, okay? So this is what it should look like when you're all done with your art project today. Because we didn't do any gluing or any painting, I can go ahead and I can take and open up my portfolio one last time and I can tuck it right in under my sketchbook. And I can close it on up and make sure I get my paper clip back on top of my folder. Now, before you do finish up here, there is one more thing that you friends are gonna need to do on Seesaw. Under this video, there's a template. And again, this template is talking about symmetry. We talked about what symmetry is right here in this video. There's gonna be four different pictures of things and they will each have a line of symmetry through them. All you friends have to do is circle the pictures that show symmetry. You might have to look really closely and see, does that have the same on both sides or are the two sides different? If they are different, don't circle them, only circle the pictures that show symmetry. All right, my amazing artists, I will see you next time to finish up our symmetry bug names. And as always, have fun creating, my friends.